When you take a typical structure fire and add wind, fire conditions can progress so fast that firefighters are caught in a situation that even the best can't survive. This is a typical windy day in the Phoenix region with steady wind at 24 miles an hour and gusts over 30. But you don't need this much wind to have a wind impacted fire. Virginia, 2008. Firefighter dies in wind driven residential structure fire. Texas, 2009. Two firefighters die in wind driven fire. Texas, 2013. Four firefighters die, 16 injured in commercial structure fire. Wind was a factor. Ohio, 2014. Two firefighters die in rapid fire progression. Wind was a factor. Boston, 2014. Lieutenant and firefighter die in wind driven structure fire. In this video, we want to increase firefighter awareness of how wind can dramatically worsen fire conditions. But wind is just one piece of the puzzle. Situational awareness, understanding flow paths, the reality of modern fuel loads, and how modern research-based fire ground tactics all play a part in fundamentally changing how we fight fire so we can do it safer and more effectively. Let's take a look at it. Size up begins with a dispatch and continues until fire control is achieved. But situational awareness plays a big part here. Be aware of weather forecasts for wind and pay attention to wind indicators like flags and blowing smoke while responding. We often have wind, so it's easy to forget how it can be a critical fire ground factor. Pay attention to the wind, even what seems like light wind. Wind is just outside airflow and it dramatically enhances interior flow paths. One way to define the flow path is the path that air takes into the structure to feed the fire, and then the path that the smoke and heat takes getting out of the structure. This is essentially ventilation. Opening a door or a window is ventilation. If a window breaks upwind in the flow path, fire conditions can rapidly progress to flashover. And if you're in the exhaust portion of the flow path when that happens, escape may be impossible. Our tactics are based on the behavior of the legacy fuels of 50 years ago. Synthetic material in a house today is fuel that burns faster and releases significantly more heat than fires our fathers fought. We need to rethink our tactics. Fighting fire from the unburned portion might be the right thing to do on one fire, and it might get us killed on the next fire. Opening the front door when the fire is in the back with the wind pushing it can be a fatal mistake as you will see. Let's take a look at the 2009 Houston fatality. Firefighters responded to a fire in a ranch style home, like homes that are typical here, and made entry through the front door. Unfortunately, the wind was blowing toward the back of the house, and when a large window failed at the back, the resulting flow path was so intense that the firefighters were not able to make it to the front door. UL and NIST research has shown that just 10 miles an hour of wind can dangerously affect a fire and common conditions like this with wind over 20 miles an hour can create sudden catastrophic events on the interior of a structure fire. The effect is similar to wind chill. The temperature is 400 but feels like a thousand. Same setup except in this case we're blowing a 20 mile an hour wind against this window. Again, the, the corridor is fine for a firefighter right now. You're crawling in the cool air. The hot gases are above your head. You could be in there for 10, 15 minutes, something like that, until the window fails. Once the window fails, we have good mixing. We have, and we're training more oxygen to get better burning. And look at what happens. This is what firefighters have referred to as a blowtorch effect. This is what the firefighters in Vandalia said they saw. They're trying to move down the hall and said the door was full of flames top to bottom, and they couldn't get to it. So how do we control that? Well, one way to control that is if you can maintain control of the exit, keep the, keep the door closed. With the door closed, we can't even drop the glass, right? Because it's, it's maintaining pressure in there to fight the window. We take the glass out the rest of the way. The fire's still not very happy. You see a lot of heavy soot inside. It's not burning very efficiently. It's under pressure. You see the smoke moving around the door through the keyhole and everything else, but, but it's not burning very cleanly. And it's still protecting the hallway, the corridor here, the public corridor, until remotely with the steel bar, we swing that door open. And then again, we'll see the same kind of change as we did in the previous case. If 
because by opening that door, we've now completed the flow path. In Ohio in 2014, the crew of Engine 3 made entry in the front second story window of an apartment while the crew of Engine 6 opened the side door with 13 miles per hour of wind. The resulting flashover changed the conditions to fatal in less than a minute. These firefighters were close to the exits and were not able to escape. These conditions are present in your first due on a regular basis. Consider the 2014 near miss with Engine 15 in Phoenix. The fire was in the back of the house with a seven mile per hour wind at the back of the house. Engine 15 opened the downwind front door and made entry. The fire rapidly progressed in seconds and nearly took the lives of two firefighters. NIOSH has been saying for years, do a 360. And NIST and UL Research say, if you see fire, put water on it. Stay upwind, and in some cases, fight the fire from the burn portion. Crews and battalion chiefs must be aware of wind indicators like flags and moving trees to indicate wind speed and direction. Announce the wind hazard on the tactical channel when conditions dictate. Be extremely cautious when entering a structure fire from the downwind side. Attack from the upwind side and consider fire flow path as doors and windows are open and especially when wind 10 miles per hour or greater is present. Let's use this research to stop repeating the same mistakes. Maybe it's time to change how we fight fire. For Peoria Fire, I'm Tom Penley. Stay safe.